Welcome to this video tutorial on using the direct ophthalmoscope for OpticDisc.org. Here we will discuss the anatomy and function of a direct ophthalmoscope and we will then take you through the procedure for using the ophthalmoscope. There are many different types and designs of ophthalmoscope. However, it is important to know that these all have essentially the same controls and method of use. The handle contains the battery pack. Some will be single life units, some will be rechargeable. Most of thalmoscopes have a rotating cuff at the top of the handle which switches the light on. It can also be used to adjust the strength of the light. The head contains a light source, lens bank, viewing aperture and a series of filters. The filters can usually be selected using a dial on the front of the ophthalmoscope, such as the blue filter, which is used when examining the front of the eye with fluorescein dye. Similarly, the size of the aperture can be altered using the same controls. A smaller light may be more useful in a patient who has not had dilating drops instilled, or has a small pupil. The dials on the side of the head select the strength of the lens being used to view the fundus. Plus lenses are usually green, yellow or black and are dialed clockwise, with minus lenses most often being red and dialed anti-clockwise. This is used to bring the various structures into focus whilst examining the eye and also compensates for the refractive error in both the patient and the examiner. For example, if the observer has no refractive error but the patient is myopic or short-sighted, then minus lenses would be required to bring the fundus into focus. Before examining the eye, it is important to set up the environment to allow a satisfactory examination. Firstly, the patient should be seated comfortably with enough room for you to stand at either side. Room lights should ideally be dimmed, although this has not been done for the purposes of this video. The pupils should be dilated with a midriatic drop beforehand to allow a more thorough examination of the fundus without pupillary constriction. A suitable drop would be tropicamide 1%, which acts within 15 minutes and keeps pupils dilated for approximately two hours. The patient's glasses should be removed unless highly astigmatic, and the observer should remove glasses unless highly myopic. This allows the ophthalmoscope to be held as close as possible to the observer's eye. When examining the patient's right eye, the observer should hold the ophthalmoscope in his right hand with the right forefinger controlling the dial, and vice versa for when examining the left eye. The first step in examination is checking for a red reflex. This is done by dialing up a zero lens and standing at arm's length from the patient. One eye is then compared to the other by looking through the eyepiece and looking for the red reflex. This is essentially a reflection of the light off the retina and can be reduced by any opacities in the media between the front and the back of the eye, such as cataract, vitreous hemorrhage or retinal detachment. Once the red reflex has been tested, a plus 10 lens is dialed up. The patient must be given clear instructions to look straight ahead or fix on a distant target. Standing at the side of the patient, you come in from a slightly temporal approach. Coming in from an angle of approximately 45 degrees helps one land on the optic disc. With a plus 10 lens in place, the ophthalmoscope should be focused on the cornea and this allows examination of the anterior segment of the eye. Then dialing down from a 10 towards 0 shifts the point of focus from the front to the back of the eye, i.e. towards the retina and this should be stopped when any retinal features such as blood vessels come into focus. The first structure usually encountered is the optic disc. Magnification is 15 times, so the disc usually fills an undilated view. If the disc is not seen immediately, any blood vessels should be followed, as this will lead to the optic disc, remembering that the V created by the branching vessels always points to the disc. A six-point examination process should then be followed. This starts with looking at the optic disc and commenting on the cup, the colour and the contour. Then the four vascular arcades should be examined, i.e. suprotemporal, supranasal, infrotemporal and infranasal. And finally, the macula is examined. This is done by asking the patient to look directly towards the light and is left to the end to minimise patient discomfort. So once again, the examination starts at the optic disc before moving on to the suprotemporal arcade supranasal arcade, infrotemporal arcade, infranasal arcade, and finally 
looking at the macula. It is important that when examining a portion of retina, one asks the patient to look in that direction and moves in the opposite direction. This brings the desired area into view and allows examination of more peripheral retina. Don't forget to use your left hand and left eye when examining the patient's left eye. Using the direct ophthalmoscope can be challenging at first. However, with practice, it can become an essential diagnostic tool for ophthalmologists, physicians, and general practitioners.